for dinner today I'm having some soba noodles with sauteed spinach with garlic sesame oil and soy sauce and then soba dip sauce made with dashi broth soy sauce sugar sesame oil some I don't even know what to call it it's like a it's like a Japanese somewhat spicy powder seasoning that you put on literally everything in Japan you can find it in like all the restaurants no idea what it's called and then some sesame seeds and seaweed in there and I'm just gonna eat outside on the balcony today uh, to enjoy the rest of the sun while it's out so we just decided to go on a little bit of a walk this evening in the city of course we brought our face masks but we're currently drinking stuff so no face masks now but we brought them but yeah it's so beautiful out this evening streets are fairly empty we are having a morning stroll with some Starbucks I got their everything croissant breakfast thing and we're just gonna eat it at Sugar Beach which is like a tiny little lakeside beach area in Toronto and enjoy this beautiful weather that we're having Uber Eats for dinner, which is not something we normally do. Burgers from King Tap, so good. Today is a rainy day in Toronto, which is why my hair is a mess because we had to go to the post office to pick up a planter, DIY planter idea thing that I ordered. And why I say DIY idea is because it's not technically a planter for your balcony because everywhere I looked, they wanted $100 or more for a stackable planter for plants to put outside. And I just couldn't justify spending over $100 on a planter, just absolutely ridiculous. So instead, I ordered a kid's toy stackable cubby because it was only like $65 instead, which was the cheapest alternative I can find. So I figured I would just be super simple, DIY it, and just stab some holes to the bottoms of the bins, and voila, you have a functioning planter for plants. So I'm going to put it together today. I can't actually put it out on the balcony because it's raining and I was already in the rain, which is why my hair is like this. And it's just, it's not gonna be enjoyable. So I'll hold off for a few days, but I figured I can at least put it together so when I'm all ready to go, I can just throw it on, on the balcony and be done with it. Oh, so, this is what it looks like unassembled. The only thing I really dislike about it is the color of the bins. All the options I could find were multicolored, but I figured whatever, that's okay. Either I can leave it or if I really want, I can just paint over it with white or some other color so it's more consistent. So I'm gonna go put this together now and maybe paint the bins. Okay, 
Okay, so it's all built and put together. The only thing I have to do now is paint them. I'm thinking of using some white acrylic paint that I have on hand just to do like a quick over so it's not as vibrant. And I'm not going to paint the inside of the planters, just simply the front outside or the outside around the edges and not the bottom because there's really no point. It's just visibly what we see when we're out there on the balcony that I don't want to be colorful. And to put the holes to the bottom of the planters, I'm thinking I'm going to use... <laughs> I'm gonna use my electric nail filer and I have this really sharp pointed one and I'm hoping it will work to at least get the hole started and then I can cut some slits in it so that the water can breathe out through the soil so the roots of any vegetables or flowers that I grow don't rot. So I'm gonna to try to do that now. <laughs> the nail filer didn't work. It wasn't sharp enough on the tip of it. So I have this like saw with a very sharp pointy end which worked so good. So I'm just gonna do this to the rest of the bins. I'm thinking maybe I'll put like six holes throughout the bottom of the bigger ones and maybe four in the low, no, I'll put a bunch more. I'm just gonna put a bunch all randomly throughout. Hello everyone. Today for the first time ever, I'm gonna make gyoza. I have never made gyoza by hand and I'm doing it fully by scratch which includes the paper that goes around it like the wrapper around it. Apparently it's really really easy to make it's just a little bit time consuming to do the paper so essentially it's just like two cups of flour with a little bit of salt and water. So simple I don't I don't believe it. I've got my two cups of flour with salt and now I just have to add two thirds of a cup of water and basically knead and play with it and then let it sit and then repeat that like three times over until it's like elasticy, and then you can shape it into wrappers for dumplings. Okay, so I just finished kneading the dough and you're supposed to let it sit for two minutes then knead it more and then repeat like another time so while that sits i figured i would get my meat mixture ready apparently you need a ton of chives or green onions diced up really thinly I don't know how much, so I'm just going to cut a portion of it off, if I can. So I chopped up maybe like a, a quarter of the cabbage, diced as thinly as I could possibly get it. Now you're supposed to add about one tablespoon of sesame oil into the mixture. And from the recipe that I'm going, which I found here, I'll link it below. It's like a Japanese, an old Japanese woman's recipe. You're also supposed to add garlic, but I forgot to buy garlic. And I recently ran out of garlic, which is just interesting timing. So you're supposed to add a bunch of garlic as well, but we're gonna have to skip that for the video today. But I'm also gonna add a little bit of pepper because I've noticed in a lot of gyoza that I eat there is always like a tiny hint of pepper to it so I'm just gonna add a small amount. I'm also gonna be using ground chicken today because my grocery store had absolutely no pork because the Rona is making a shortage on the meat industry so we're going with chicken today even though normally I prefer my pork gyoza. So about one tablespoon worth of sesame oil. About 
right and then a little bit of pepper and then here we have 0.5 kg that's about a pound right half a kilogram is a pound i don't know and then chicken i don't think this bowl is gonna fit oh my gosh i have made an absolute mess i have to clean this up well before we get back to kneading and just using our hands mix it okay so my chicken is all mixed up hopefully it tastes good without garlic and salt i one thing that i find interesting is how the filling has like no seasoning in it it's literally just a crap load of green onions they do suggest using asian green onions but i couldn't find those at my local grocery store um but literally just like a ton of those and a ton of cabbage and then your meat of choice and then that's it i saw a few recipes where they included a bunch of other stuff but then when i thought about it like going back on the dumplings I've always eaten in the past, the filling is always very light and mild, and it's the dip sauce that has that like, wow, salty flavor. So I cleaned up my counter. It's all dry, cleaned with soap, so there's no chicken salmonella here. We've got a Mr. Flynn assisting, and now it's time to knead the dough again until it's nice and soft and stretchy, so that might take a while. Our dumplings are folded and they're so ugly oh my god I had such such hope that I would be good at this so these ones are mine and these ones are my boyfriend's oh they look so bad and we only got through about half of the filling so we're gonna freeze the rest of it for later I feel like pre-made wrappers would probably be a whole lot easier as I found it really difficult to get the outer edges thinner than the middle, like it just ended up being the middle being, I don't know. I would probably say to try to find a more glutinous flour because um, that, like all the recipes say you can use all purpose flour, but then they say like, try to look for something more glutinous. And it's like, yeah, why don't you just say use more glutinous flour? Cause it's definitely like not stretchy enough to be able to like manipulate a lot, so. We're going to fry these up um, fried gyoza style and maybe we'll boil some. I don't know. Should we boil some? No? Do you we'll just see want how fried? The goes. Okay, so we'll do some frying ones and see how it goes. Okay, so I have my frying pan heated up to about a medium heat to low medium heat. And when I saw the old Japanese woman sharing her recipe, she simply used sesame oil as the oil for her gyoza. So I'm just gonna put a decent amount of that on the frying pan and move it around so everything gets coated. And then going ahead and placing them in. Oh my gosh, one of them already opened up a bunch. Oh no, they're all ripping open. No. No. Oh, it's not so bad. They didn't rip. This one, no, this one did. Old Japanese woman made it look so easy. So I'm gonna drizzle a little more sesame oil on top. I saw her do it in the video at like a later point, but I feel like it needs to happen now because they're all sticking together. So that's gonna cook for like two minutes like that. I think that's how it went, yeah. Just like open and then you put the lid on and put some water in and, no, you put water in after two minutes, then the lid on and let it sit for another three minutes and then you open it up and fry it a little more and then it's done. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll just, I don't know. While that's happening, we're gonna try to salvage these. Oh, oh no. All right. 
So it's been about two to three minutes, so I'm gonna splash some water in there and then put a lid on it. Oh my God, the lid's too small, get in there. Okay, so now we're gonna make our sauce while those cook. Hopefully they cook through properly because they're already looking not <laughs> the best. But anyway, for this sauce, it's super, super simple. It's basically just light soy sauce, rice, the vinegar, or you can use any white vinegar. I've seen people saying you can also use apple cider vinegar, but I, I don't know. And then sesame oil and chili oil, but honestly, I just put a few red pepper flakes in the leftover chili or sesame oil that I have because I just bought a new sesame oil and there's not that much left in here. So this is gonna be our makeshift chili oil. And then for me, whenever I went to gyoza restaurants or izakayas when I was living in Japan, I love this stuff. I have no idea what it's called, but it's this weird blend of like black sesames, some like herbs, and what looks, I don't even know. I don't even know, but this stuff's amazing. I put it on anything that's like fried or like noodles that are like Asian themed. I obviously wouldn't put this on pasta, but you know what I'm saying. So it's literally just those things. About one tablespoon of the soy sauce, vinegar, and then to your liking of the additional. And that's pretty much it. So you're supposed to, like after they're done cooking, you're supposed to flip them onto a plate and then serve them. But there's a little too much oil and water in the bottom and I don't want to accidentally hurt myself. So I'm just using chopsticks and a paper towel to pick up any excess. There we go. And then taking the plates, you just literally put it over top. Oh. Yaki gyoza! <laughs> so what I'm thinking is like making your own dough from actual all-purpose flour. It's too doughy. Like it's just, it was really difficult to get it the right consistency, like the thinness overall. And I even noticed while it was cooking, it just seemed like where it was breaking, it wasn't, it just seemed very like, dough, not like a gyoza wrapper. So I think if you are going to make your own gyoza wrapper or dumpling wrapper from scratch, don't use all purpose flour, even though everywhere it does say it. I think it's like not the best, like no. Or just get actual rice or not rice, but dumpling wrappers. I think that would be the easiest thing. But for me, I wanted to try making everything from scratch to see how it goes. So we are gonna taste these and see if they're any good at all. At least the meat's cooked throughout. That's what's most important, right? Like To be honest, the ones that I made don't look half bad. They're a little too thick though. Like that's the problem, the outer edge. Like the thickness of the actual dumpling itself is not too bad, but it's the outer edge that's a little too thick. So let's try, it's probably gonna be fire hot. Oh! It's too thick. It's definitely way too thick. I can't even taste the meat. Hold on. Let me try one more time. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Mmm. Yeah. The middle part is really good, but the outer edge is way too thick. Even though I tried so hard to make it thin, it just didn't work out. So I think like, yeah, it would be way easier to just buy the pre-made wrappers, but whatever. brought him out on the balcony. He's securely tied to the thing with a leash and a harness so he can't jump up over the balcony and he can just stay in a limited area. We'll see how he fares. But anyway, today I'm planting my seeds in my planter after painting the edges black. Oh, so that's that. I have tomatoes. Then I think over here up top I have basil or marigolds green onion, which I just cut off some and stuck the roots in from grocery shopping. Then here I either have marigolds or the 
basil. I put two. I should have color coded better, but I wasn't thinking. So both the small blue ones are either basil or marigold. And at the bottom I have sunflowers in a yellow bin, and then at the very bottom in the blue bin I have cucumbers. So hopefully those will grow and <laughs> cover the inner color. I mean, of course, I think black spray paint definitely would have worked better, but I didn't want to go out and purchase any since I already had a ton of black acrylic paint, like a lot of it. So I figured I would just use that and save cost. Um, it's not holding the best, but whatever. I don't really care to be honest. So yeah, that's that. And Mr. Flynn is getting a little brave. He's very securely tied here, but he's still very, very nervous about being on the balcony, but that's good. But that's his maximum length that he has, so he can't jump up or go too far. Hi. Hello. 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 